Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun here. I am out in the wide open wilderness of Wyoming. Wyoming, where the world is your range. <laughs> and today we're gonna talk about torture testing. Specifically, I have a Glock 17. Yes, it's a, a cool Gucci looking one. It's got a, a Duracoat finish on it and it's got an RMR from Trigicon. It's got a, a, a TLR light from Streamlight and it has a Magpul magazine sticking out of the bottom. But this is a Glock 17. Now here in our world, people like to Instagram models and YouTubers and so forth, they like to do torture tests. And torture tests are fun and you guys all like to watch them, but how many of them are really practical? You know, the guy who goes to the third floor balcony and chucks a pistol out into the asphalt parking lot and says, see, look what I did. Is that really practical? Are you going to drop a pistol off of a third floor balcony? Or are you gonna set it on fire? Or are you gonna freeze it to zero in a block of ice? Remember, the gun is supposed to be on you, attached to your body, in a holster. So when would your, your gun catch on fire or freeze in a block of ice and it wasn't attached to you? We're talking about a duty holster here. We're talking about, or I'm sorry, a duty pistol here. One that you would use with which to fight. So I would said, all right, what's practical? Should we test guns? Yes, we should test them. What is practical? Well, we're gonna test it today. The practicality, I believe, is a drop test from chest height. Not from three floors or from a hundred foot crane, but if you drop a gun, it's probably gonna be right here, right? In your chest area. So we're gonna do that. Uh, water test, should these pistols be able to be submerged in water, come out of the water and still work? Yes, obviously, because it's a duty gun, it's a fighting gun, you might go underwater, it might fall in the water. Uh, dirt, sand, grit. Now, most of the dirt, sand, and grit is gonna come from you just carrying the thing in a holster out in a hostile environment, but we bury them in the sand and grit and nastiness. We do that to represent or to speed up the dirt and the sand and, and the junk that would get on your gun from you carrying it in a holster in a hostile environment. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna test all those things. We're gonna do the drop test, we're gonna do the bury in the sand test, and we're gonna do the water test, and then, well, we'll see what happens. So I am Paul Markle, and I'll be right back with the results. Okay guys, you saw it, we dropped it. I actually dropped it several times because we did the slow-mo and, and so on and so forth. So we dropped it from chest height onto hard packed rocky ground. Then we buried it in sand, dug it up and fired it. Then we dropped it in a bucket of water, pulled it out and shot it. Actually, I did the drop it in the bucket of water a couple of different times just for filming purposes, but we did it all. And then after it was all done, I stuffed a full capacity magazine in it and a blam, blam, blam and blasted it. And we didn't have any problems. And yes, the RMR is functioning perfectly fine. Uh, no problems with the sight, no problems with the gun. So there you go. That's what I believe is a practical torture test when it comes to fighting handguns. Okay guys, one thing before I let you go. Obviously I've got the pistol, I've got the G17 all disassembled on my workbench here and I'm gonna go ahead and clean it and lube it. But before I took the gun out to the range to do the torture test, I made sure that I disassembled the gun 
and I lubricated it properly. And I lubricated it with this EDC CLP, the red stuff here. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can use whatever you want. I don't care. I've been using this one for a couple of years now. I've been very happy with it. So that's what I use. But the fact of the matter is this. If you're going to torture test a gun, if you're actually going to test a gun deliberately, you need to start with the gun clean and well lubricated because that is how the manufacturer intended it to be. If you start out with a dirty, dry gun and then you torture test it and you say, see, it failed, that's not really a good test because the gun's supposed to start clean and oiled. Okay, so there you go. Uh, if you're going to do any kind of torture testing, or if you're just going to carry a freaking gun, you should start out with the gun cleaned and well-oiled or lubricated first. There you go. All right, guys, I'm Paul Markle. I'll talk to you again real soon.